Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My name is Eun Siu Kang. I'm one of the associate pastors here at Ricefield United Methodist Church. It is my great joy to welcome you to our worship service at the Vine, an online campus of Ricefield United Methodist Church. We are truly grateful to have this opportunity to worship together. So our prayer is through today's worship service, you will have meaningful time and also feel God's presence and grace and love. Now, let us prepare our hearts before God. Take a deep breath and feel closer to our Lord. Please join me in our opening congregational prayer. The words will be shown on your screen. Holy and loving God, thank you that through the death of Jesus, you have put to death our old selves. Now, through Jesus' resurrection, you are resurrecting us to a new life. Help us to live as those who have been brought from death to life. In Jesus' name, Amen. Let's go before God in prayer. Let us pray. Holy and loving God, thank you for giving us a new day and a new life. As we come before you today, reveal your presence in our midst and open our hearts and minds. Bind us to you in love. Lord, you are bigger than the world and bigger than our fears. We are grateful for the immensity of your love. When the immensity of your love surprises us, we long to return to you in hope. When we want to make you smaller, small enough that we can hold you, help us beyond our narrow vision. Remind us again, God, that you will always find and hold us, for your heart is big enough to hold the world including us. Teach us once more that we will always grow when we love others as we love you. Lord, you are a God who hears our voices. You are a God who answers our prayers. So now we pray for the world, this country, and our community, especially for the Middle East area. We pray for family and friends, for those who are in difficult situations. And now we pray for those whom we name with our voices or hold in our hearts. Lord, hear our prayers. You are our shepherd. You are our guardian of our souls. Touch our hearts and minds. Guide us on your path, and may goodness and mercy flow through us. 
Help us put ourselves into the world as we seek to walk in your path in love. We humbly offer this prayer in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us now take a moment to offer our hearts and gifts. As we respond to God's grace and generosity, I'd like to remind you that you can contribute to the ministry of Riceville United Methodist Church through our website and by mail. Let us continue to worship God. How are you? I'm Pastor in Seoul. I'm so excited to spend this time with y'all. So I have a question for you. What is your favorite one thing about coming to church and learning about Jesus? Well, it could be Sunday school, or it could be hanging out with your friends during fellowship time, or it could be, yes, children's message time, or Yes, VBS, VBS is coming up soon. So now that we shared uh, some of our favorite things about our faith, I wanna talk about something called confirmation. Have you ever heard about this confirmation? So confirmation is a time when kids typically around the seventh grade learn more about their faith and make a choice to follow Jesus in a deeper way. So it is a big step in their faith journey. So let us imagine um, you have a friend called Minnie. And Minnie has been going to church with her family since she was a baby. She knows some things about God and Jesus, but she wants to learn more. So she decides to join a confirmation class at the church. And in the class, Minnie learns about important things like what we believe as Christians and why we pray and how, we, how to pray and how we can live like Jesus every day. And during confirmation, she realized that she wants to make her faith her own. It means she wants to say yes to follow Jesus, not just because her parents do, but because she believes in Jesus too. So confirmation is like saying, yes, I wanna follow Jesus. I wanna be part of God's family and I wanna be part of our church's family. So today we learn about confirmation and today we have 37 confirmants to make their decision to confess their faith in this way. It is a very special time. So I hope you remember confirmation class. And when you turn to around um, 12-ish, um, I hope you take confirmation class to learn about Jesus and get closer to Jesus. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for loving us and being with us. Help us to learn more about you and grow closer to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm Pastor Julia Hayes, and I'm one of the associate pastors here. I wanted to let you know that this week at Wrightsville, we are celebrating Confirmation Sunday. We're going to get to celebrate together as 37 young people make a confession in Jesus and officially join the church as confessing members. 
If you are uh, hoping to see their faces and get to celebrate that with them, you can always check out our Facebook Live service that will be at 1115 on Sunday if you'd like to see their faces in addition to worshiping with us here on the Vine. Our scripture passage today comes from the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 9, verses 18 through 24. Hear now the word. Once, when Jesus was praying alone, with only the disciples near him, he asked them, Who do the crowds say that I am? They answered, John the Baptist, but others, Elijah, and still others, that one of the ancient prophets has arisen. Then he said to them, But who do you say that I am? Peter answered, The Messiah of God. He sternly ordered and commanded them not to tell anyone saying, the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, chief priests, and scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. Then he said to them all, if any wish to come after me, let them deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will save it. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you join me now in prayer? Holy and loving God, we, your people, are desperate today to hear from you. God, I pray that in this time you would use me, even me, to speak to your people. Lord, I pray that anything that I say that isn't from you would be instantly forgotten. But God, anything I say that is from you, let it sink and root deeply into our hearts. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Growing up, did you have a favorite character in the Bible? Probably based on Sunday school classes and VBS, maybe you might say Noah or Moses or Jonah. Well, when I started reading the Bible on my own, I discovered pretty quickly that my favorite character in the Bible is Peter. And it's because Peter is, in my opinion, the most relatable of all of the disciples. Like me, he's constantly speaking without fully thinking through the consequences and oftentimes making a fool of himself. But you can always tell that his heart is in the right place, that he wants to follow Jesus. Well, as I started praying about what scripture passage I should share for today, our Confirmation Sunday, I realized something else to love about Peter. He is a lot like our confirmands. Let me explain. When we meet Peter in this passage, he's with Jesus and the other disciples, and they've been praying on their own. Then Jesus turns to them and asks, who do the crowds say that I am? Well, it isn't hard for the disciples to answer that. They've heard all of the theories and opinions about Jesus that are out there. Some people think that he's John the Baptist come back to life after being beheaded by a government official. Others think that he's Elijah, one of the most important prophets in Israel's history, come back to life. And some people think he isn't Elijah reincarnated, but some other prophet. But then Jesus asked them a harder question. But who do you say that I am? Who do you say I am? That's a hard question. But remember, Jesus didn't ask this question as a prerequisite to follow him. The passage says specifically, that this happened when only the disciples were near. The question wasn't for the crowds, but for the small group of people that were living with Jesus and learning from him every day. Peter gives the answer that Jesus is the Messiah of God after following Jesus for a while. But how did Peter start following Jesus in the first place? Well, according to the Gospel of John, Peter only met Jesus because his brother introduced them. In John's telling, Andrew, Peter's brother, was the one who met Jesus and started following him. Then Andrew went and told Peter and brought Peter to meet Jesus. Peter, this disciple who Jesus called the rock of the church, only met Jesus because his 
brother dragged him there. The life of faith is ultimately grounded in the grace of God. We're carried by God's grace that we did not and could not ever earn. And an expression of that grace can be the people around us, especially those who've raised us. Peter was brought to Jesus by another person, and so were our confirmands. All of our confirmands have grown up in the church, and many of our confirmands were baptized as babies. Their parents stood up in front of the church, declared their faith in Christ, and promised to raise up their child in the church and to set an example of Christian living. And the congregation that was gathered that day promised on behalf of all of us, the whole universal church, that we would surround them with a community of love and forgiveness. For some of our confirmands, that even happened in this very sanctuary. Maybe you were part of the congregation that day. Well, when I was the age of our confirmands, my family was starting to attend a different church than the one that I had grown up in. I came to love our new church, but I was terrified to go to youth group. All the kids seemed to know each other already, and I didn't know any of them. I was afraid that there wasn't going to be a place for me. My mom encouraged me to go to youth group, gently at first, and then more and more forcefully as time went on. Well, finally, I decided that I was ready to try it. But I'd recently had foot surgery, and I was in a wheelchair. So my mom had to help me get up the elevator and down the hall to our youth room. As she pushed me down the hallway, I started to panic. I told my mom that I changed my mind and I didn't want to go. But my mom was not going to let me chicken out any longer. She literally rolled me into the room and then quickly left. I had no choice but to be there. Many of you know that I always share the same benediction at the end of our worship services. And it includes the prayer that God will go behind us to push us into places we might not go on our own. Well, I like to joke that as much as God pushes us into places we might not go on our own, mothers do too. And in my case, literally. Confirmands, maybe you needed to be pushed to go through this process at first. Maybe it was your parents who signed you up and told you that you would be doing it. Maybe you were scared to walk into the fellowship hall on that first night of class. And maybe you felt like I did the first time that I went to youth group, nervous about what might happen, scared that I wouldn't fit in. But I pray that at some point, this journey has become your own. That like Peter, you might have been introduced to Jesus by someone else, but now you're ready to follow him for yourself. And like Peter, Jesus is giving you the chance to make that decision. Who do you say that I am? Not who do your parents say that I am, or who do your friends say that I am, or even who do your pastors say that I am, but who do you say that I am? Isn't it beautiful that God gives us the dignity of a choice? That God gave us free will to be able to choose to follow Jesus, even though that means that we have the ability to turn away. In his book, Mere Christianity, C.S. Lewis puts it this way, free will, though it makes evil possible, is also the only thing that makes any love or goodness or joy worth having. The happiness which God designs for his higher creatures is the happiness of being freely, voluntarily united to him and to each other in an ecstasy of love and delight compared with which the most rapturous love between a man and a woman on this earth is mere milk and water. And for that, they've got to be free. As adults, we can take our freedom to make decisions for ourselves for granted. But teenagers get what a privileged choice is. I love how one of our confirmation, confirmands put it. She said, I really don't get to make many decisions on my own, like where I go to middle school or what time I go to bed at night. 
but making my confirmation and continuing to build a stronger relationship with God is all my decision, and I couldn't be happier about it. Our confirmands have had to make a lot of decisions throughout this process. Many of them had to decide to skip an important practice or even a game for their sports team so that they could come to confirmation class. Those decisions were just as much a confession of faith through their actions as the confession of faith that they'll make through their words later in the service. We don't just answer Jesus' question, who do you say that I am, with our words. We answer it with our lives. We confess that Jesus is Lord in how we spend our time, our money, our energy, and in how we treat those who are around us. Peter made the right choice by saying, confessing that Jesus is God's Messiah. And we'll do that here today again. But all of this got me thinking, is this the end of Peter's story? You see, in the Christian life, we can be tempted to think that the pinnacle of our Christian experience is confessing Jesus, is believing that Jesus is Lord and Savior. But when we look at Peter's story, we see that the most interesting and pivotal things that Peter experienced actually happen after his confession of faith in Jesus. Eight days after Peter's confession, he gets a glimpse of Jesus' real glory. Jesus is transfigured in front of him, glowing in bright white clothes. And God's voice booms from the heavens saying, this is my son, listen to him. Later, he sees Jesus heal dozens of people. He hears Jesus' teachings on prayer, on true greatness, on God's expansive love. He sees Jesus flip over tables in the temple. He has his feet washed by Jesus. He eats the meal that we now know as the Last Supper. He sees Jesus' death on the cross and is there at the tomb to discover his resurrection three days later. And after Jesus' ascension, Peter becomes the leader of the early church. He experiences the fall of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost, and he preaches to thousands of people who make their own confession of faith in Jesus. Through the grace of God, he helps lay the foundation for the church, the same church that we are a part of today. Peter's greatest failures also come after his confession. His confession doesn't make him perfect. He still sticks his foot in his mouth all the time. He still doesn't understand all that Jesus is doing. And he even know, denies knowing Jesus three times. And yet, this confession is not the pinnacle of Peter's faith journey. It's just the beginning. I wonder, how different would our story be if Peter had decided to stop following Jesus after he made this confession? P Peter would have missed out on the greatest adventures of his life. And the church today might look a lot different. So to our confirmands, I want to say this. Don't miss out on the adventure by thinking of confirmation as the culmination of your faith. This is your starting point, not your finish line. I believe that what you are going to experience through God's grace as you follow Jesus is going to become more and more incredible each day. And just like Peter, you'll still have struggles. There'll be times when your faith falters. But know that this great adventure is the greatest thing that you could ever say yes to. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Would you pray with me? Holy and loving God, we give you thanks for how you've been working in the lives of all of our confirmands. God, as we experience their reaffirmation of faith, help us too to feel your fire within us rekindled 
and re-motivate us to follow you faithfully. We love you, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As you go from this time of worship, may the spirit of the living God, made known to us most fully in Jesus Christ our Lord, go before you to show you the way. Go behind you to push you into places you might not go on your own. Go above you to watch over you and protect you. Go beneath you to lift you up when you cannot stand. Go beside you to be your companion and dwell within you to remind you every day that you are not alone and that you are loved beyond your wildest imagination. Go in peace. <laughs>